Hello, dear students. I am Dr. Vipin Chand Patak. Today, I will tell you about the respiration. These lectures for the BSc first semester students of zoology as per the national education policy. Here you will see here that this is the contents. This is under to the content under to the syllabus of these students. That is the pulmonary ventilation, respiratory pigment. Gaseous transport and control of respiration and the dissociation of oxygen monoclonal. Under to this process, under to the, this pulmonary ventilation, we will read the two topics here. There. One is the pulmonary ventilation and mechanism of ventilation. Then we should, uh, in the next lecture, we should go to the pulmonary volume and capacity. Before to this one, the pulmonary ventilation. Pulmonary is pulmos means the lungs. And in case of the pulmonary ventilation, in case of the pulmonary ventilation, before to the starting to this pulmonary ventilation, we should learn some about the anatomical features of this respiratory system. Here you will see here, this is the diaphragm. And the role of this diaphragm is to separate the, this thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. In thoracic cavity, there are two organs. One is the lungs, and other is the heart is located rest of the organs are located in the abdominal cavity. This diaphragm also helps in the, in the breathing process, uh, in the respiratory process. Here you will see here that this is our nasal loach, this is the this is the nasal conchi, and this is the frontal sinus, and this is the sphenoidal sinus, and this is the nasal cavity. This nasal cavity also opens in the pharynx. This pharynx is junction this uh, again this mouth is also opens in this pharynx and and the ear also opens this is pharynx and here is the trachea as well as the esophagus also opens this pharynx so therefore this pharynx is also known as the junction junction here you will see sometimes what will be happening whenever we are taking the food and in that case uh, this uh, glottis the epiglottis closes to this trachea this glottis part and the esophagus opens. Now, students, here is the here is the sound box. This is the, the larynx. Uh, with the help of this sound box, we are uh, speaking. We are speaking. Here you will see this is the trachea, and this trachea is covered by cotyledonous rings. These cotyledonous rings are known as ring of Santorini. These are C-shaped rings. This trachea is subdivided into bronchus. And then again, bronchus subdivided into bronchioles. Ultimately, each bronchioles undergoes to the alveoli. Alveoli is the unit of unit of the lungs. If you have seen the bunches of the grapes, so you have to pick up the one grape from that bunches, so you will find that single grape just like as a alveoli. And here, all the exchange of the gases process occurs in this alveoli. Here is the one is the right lung, and other is the left lung. And the pulmonary ventilation. Now the question is, what is pulmonary ventilation? Pulmonary ventilation means is a breathing process. How we breathe? This is the breathing process. And in under to the breathing process, we are taking the air as well as we are removing the air from the lungs. Here is the uh, there are the two events will be occurs. In one is the inspiration, other events is expiration. And now students for the for, for driving to this pulmonary ventilation process, there are some pressures responsible. The question is, what is pressure? Pressure means force upon area. That means the unit area, the force per unit area is called pressure. Here is the sum is the atmospheric pressure, second is the alveolar pressure, and third is the pleural pressure. Now the question is, what is pleural pressure? The pleural pressure means is a pressure between the pleural walls and chest wall pleura and it is a thin space that is called the pleural pressure and alveolar pressure that pressure which is within the alveoli that is called the alveolar pressure and transpulmonary pressure is a dif pressure difference between the pleural pressure and alveolar pressure so what will be happening if you uh, in case of this one if you see that uh, the intrapleural pressure and as well as the alveolar pressure which decrease will decrease during the uh, inspiration events and lungs volume will increase. But on the other hand, whenever the uh, when in expiration process, this intrapleural pressure will increase, that means the alveolar pressure will increase slightly and lungs volume will decrease. And if you know about the 
rule of boils P inversely proportional 1 upon P. If volume increases, the pressure will be decreasing. If pressure will increases, volume will be increasing. P V is equal to K. Now, students, uh, for more study, you should go to this book also. Here is the uh, these pressures. The question is how you will find out the atmospheric pressure. Uh, you know very well about that in atmosphere, the percentage of oxygen is approximately 21%. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 760 mm at G. So you uh, you multiply to this 600, 600, 760 mm at G into 21. Then by that process, you will find out the partial pressure of the oxygen. And more partial pressure of nitrogen because nitrogen has more contact. So, but in case of in case of the mountains, in case of the mountains, the atmospheric pressure is decreases. Ultimately, what will be happening? The partial pressure of the oxygen will be decreases. Uh, that that causes a mountainous sickness also, or uh, some difficulties occurs in the breathing occur here. But the percentage of oxygen is 21 percent is also present here because the atmosphere is also there. But the atmospheric pressure is decreased due to decreasing atmospheric pressure. Partial pressure is decreased. Now this is you will see here that this is the uh, transpulmonary pressure. It is a dif pressure difference between the alveolar pressure and the pleural pressure. Pleural pressure and uh, this is the intra-alveolar pressure means the pressure between the alveoli and this is the intra-pleural pressure. This is the pleural membrane of the alveoli. This is the pleural membrane of the chest wall. This is a thin sphere under to this is space of fluid is present that is called pleural fluid and that will, will protect to these lungs. These are very sophisticated organs. Now, during the expression process, you will see here that the diaphragm showing the downward movement. A diaphragm will be contracted here and the in external intercostal muscles will be contraction. This is the contraction and the expansion of the thoracic cavity. But in expiration, this is the upward movement of the diaphragm and diaphragm will relax and intercostal muscles will be external intercostal muscles relax and the volume of this thoracic cavity reduces during the expiration process and this is the inspiration process. You have to compare to the both the processes of the inspiration and expiration by that processes you can learn more about. You have to uh, uh, take some practical exercises during the way you have to take a deep breath during the inspiration process and then the expiration process. Some muscles are also involved in, their, in, in that case and then you will find out to these muscles, which muscles will involve, role of these muscles, how these muscles will help. Right? So these are these are uh, your 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 uh, most of the questions will be expected here, and by that process you will uh, you will learn the pulmonary ventilation process. Under to this pulmonary ventilation process, we have described the uh, basic anatomy of the respiratory respiratory system, and the mechanism of pulmonary ventilation and the step to the extent of the pulmonary ventilation, inspiration, expression, and atmospheric pressure, intrapleural pressure, transpulmonary pressure, and alveolar process. And, uh, and uh, by that process, you can uh, uh, just to uh, aware about the basic concept of the pulmonary ventilation. Thank you very much.